Hello. 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 Hmm. Okay. I just want to make sure I got everybody's um <laughs> everyone's name on here. So how are you guys doing? Good, thanks. Doing good, good, fine. <laughs> Miss Jenny, I have yes. a question uh, uh -huh. for the assignment. Um, they asked the question, what color would be a 7GB? A 7GB, that's gold. Gold? Blonde. Yeah, gold blonde. Okay. It's a B, right? Like boy? No. Oh. Uh, 7G? Yeah. 7G by itself or 7GB? 7G. Oh, 7 gold. That's what it is. Oh, okay. Okay. We're actually going to go through that today. Yeah. <laughs> Isabella. Okay. I'm here. I don't know. I don't know if you called my oh. name or not. Isabella? Is that who's talking? Who's talking? No, Athena. Athena. Oh, I got you, Athena. I try to get you guys when you come in, when I let you in the in the room, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I'll do it when I get everybody in here. Uh, I'm just looking scary today. I'm not trying to show my face. <laughs> That's okay. Not a big deal. Why, did you try the hair color already, Athena? No. <laughs> so why are you looking yeah. scary? <laughs> Because my hair's like up in a bun and I look like I haven't slept. I just look like I look like Mrs. Frankenstein. I thought you were already testing the color, color theory thing. No, <laughs> I dyed my sister's hair the other night though. Uh oh. Um, Let's hear about that story. It came out fine because my, my stepmom bleached. Hold on, the uh -huh. school bell's ringing. Um, it came out fine. The only problem is that my stepmom my sister's hair this like while we were on COVID break. Uh -huh. And um it came out all jagged and sideways and stuff because she doesn't know how to do a proper ombre. Uh-huh. And cause she's used to just bleaching her entire head platinum. Yeah. And so she tried to do like an ombre for my sister's hair, but it ended up looking like jagged lines. And so she didn't want to go to school, like start school up again with, you know, weird like hair. Like it looks like a kindergartner did it. And uh -huh. um, so she like begged me. I was like, dude, I do color this week. Can I just do it this next weekend after I test out? She's like, no, I need it done now. So I bought like the darkest brown I could find that would match the top of her head. Yeah. But because her hair is bleached, it came out lighter on the bottom than the top. Okay, was it green? No, it's not green. Was it wasn't ashy. Like it wasn't ashy. It's, like it's like a light auburn brown, but the top of her head is so dark that it's Because that's just the healthy hair. Yeah, it just doesn't look as dark as she wanted it to. Okay, so she And I told needs her, to, I'm, uh, like, I, I'm like, you could tell all your friends that your stepmom messed up, and then I can take you to this, I can get an appointment for you at the school, and then they can do it. And she's like, no, I want you to do it. I'm like, okay, then can't you wait until this week when I, when she I do color? Haircut. She needs a haircut on the end. Her hair's already super short. Like, if we were to cut off her hair, she'd have a bob, and she doesn't want that. If those ends aren't taking color, they're not going to take color. That's what I'm oh, saying. Oh, it That's took the you... color. It just didn't come out it's as lighter. dark as it wanted to. It's... Yeah. That's okay. My, I did one last night, and I got a strike. Okay. I, was I, like, I, I was like, what? Ashley. Okay. Something's uh, echoing. <laughs> I know it's because everybody's got the mics on. Everybody's um, got the mics on. I'm gonna put mine off. Okay. okay. But yeah, I tried. I I asked her if she wanted to do like a like a um a deep conditioner on her hair or something just to like I don't know help her hair uh -huh. health before we did that. 
she didn't want it. She just wanted at least brown hair for school. So I was like, okay, but it's not going to come out the way you want it. She likes it. She just, it's not, it's, it's bothering my OCD. <laughs> but she looks cute. She looks cute with her brown hair. It kind of looks like it's like a fade from dark hair to light brown hair. So it's, so it's not the bad. opposite of a balayage. Huh? <laughs> yeah, basically. It's like it was flipped. It, li- it went from dark to light instead of light to dark. So. Um, and that's what the ombre. <laughs> the ombre. Yeah, I actually, oh, I actually cool. just saw a post on uh, balayage. That was. Uh, <laughs> they have like three, like oh, six different types, right? Yeah. Hold on one second. Well, it's live. I'll be busy later. Okay, I had to shut the door there. Okay. But yeah, do you have any tips on how to fix that outside of like cutting her hair off? I don't know. Boo, you cheated on that knockout burger. I'm going to tell you what happened to mine last night. I did one okay, last I can't, night. I can't, really hear, I can't really hear you though. Okay. I did one last night and I got um, a little bit of a line, like in the weirdest section, like right where her occipital is. It's like a straight little line that goes around. It blends, but it gets really light at one point. And I kept thinking, you know, it looks like hot roots, but it's not hot roots because it's not on the roots. <laughs> the only thing I can think yeah. of is that, and I told Connie this, she goes, maybe you over processed it. I'm like, no, because they were all the same. Hair was all the same color. So I'm thinking, because I had the blow dryer, because I had to put it on dry hair. And if you heat up the head, well, those were the last sections that we had that was still damp and we were they were hot because I just dried them. I don't know how to explain mm-hmm. it. <clears throat> That's the only area where it did it. I was like, hmm. So I'm gonna go over it again, I guess, with um, semi-permanent, because that's what I used to see if it'll take that little shade out. Yeah. If it doesn't, I'm gonna have to do permanent. Because uh, it needs something to deposit it. Huh? And it's purple. That's what's just weird about it. It's a purple, and that's like a little wine. You can almost like it's a shadow you can see in the light. I guess you could say like a, a, a wine purple. Is that what you said? Yeah, and it's about this big. Okay, it's about that big, and it goes like right across this, like the crown of. I was like, Ugh. like where'd that come from? <laughs> just like just like a random spot on the head. It wasn't yes. the entire color. And that's it was like so the last weird. part that we blue dry it. And I'm oh like, okay, God. so I'll put it on. I'll go and get another color because I'm um I need more color but I'll put it on today and it'll actually go on the dry hair and it won't be like hot or anything let's mm-hmm. just soak color the first like layer that's on there right now it'll work as a filler and when I put the next coat on it'll cover it mm-hmm. I'm very mad if I can't cover that out yeah I'd be mad too that's the Wait, I'll have to I'll have to send a picture of her hair. Okay. Um or I'll just I'll just take a picture and I'll show you at school tomorrow. Okay. Like I mean I, yeah, because I could just dye it again. That's usually what she would just do is just keep dying until it comes to the color, but that's not really good for her hair and no, just, but you're trying to deposit something in there like I'm yeah. gonna have to do too. Yeah, Let me take so, care of you guys really quick, okay? So um, please answer when I call your name. <laughs> All right, Haley. Because with age, you look different. Oh my God, your face is so mature. You have that little big face. Vanisha? I do. Okay. Did you get me? Max. I'm going through the roll sheet now. Max. Oh, my bad. Hello, Hello Max. Hello, Max. Okay. And Athena. Athena. I'm here. Okay. Um, Lauren. Here. Okay. Isabella. Here. All right. Christian. Here. Okay. Samantha. Here. Okay. Erica. Erica Hernandez here. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Um, Karina. Uh, ROP. I'm here. Okay. Jocelyn. Here. Okay. Lorena. Here. Okay. Jasmine. H. 
Here. Okay. Um, Ashley H. Here. Uh, Raylena. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Here. Okay. Um, Natalie C. I need error. Natalie C. <laughs> okay. Um, Shay. Here. Okay. So I got a couple here. All right, Haley. Haley. I'm here. Okay. Um, and Venetia, I got you. Uh, Max. I'm here. Okay. I was like waiting for that one. <laughs> All right. Yeah, too. And sorry. Mac was I got you. I got you. Um, Ashley is the other one. Yeah. What? Okay. Never mind. Never mind. Um, who did my call? today elizabeth okay elizabeth all right anybody else no hi liz okay. what's up Four, five, six. hey girl okay i got it all right so we're going to be on color theory again today but what I'd like to do is kind of finish up. There's a couple of things in your workbook before I go on to, um, you know, determining the existing colors. So did we go to 349 yesterday on your study guide or your handout and 478 in your textbook? Okay. The shirt is so confusing as well. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna to have to have you stop talking to each other, okay? Thanks. I didn't hear anybody talking. 349 in your study guide. Okay, and 478 to 481, I guess, in your your textbook. <laughs> so just, I'm all talking to people. <laughs> You can't hear that? <laughs> All right. Under the characteristics of color. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Okay. Have you filled that part in where it says color has three main characters, the hue, the value, and intensity? Yes? It's because I, I literally- Yeah, we were right underneath that. You're what? You're right underneath that, right? They haven't been filled in, okay. So how about under the hues, all right? It says hues are named and abbreviated based on color wheel position. The colors are abbreviated by the first initial and are used by the manufacturer and salons to identify specific hues of hair coloring products, which means basically they're using a level system from one to 10, one being darkest, 10 being lightest, okay? Then it goes into the actual letter behind the number. The letter is going to give you the hue. So R would stand for red, G would stand for gold, okay? A would stand for ash. Do you get where I'm going with this? So you will have a level and then you'll have a number next to it. I mean, a, a letter, a number and a letter, excuse me. All right, somebody asked a question about what was 7G, right, in your homework? All right, did you not have something like that? You had to answer what 7G was? Yeah, it was me, Vanisha. Okay. All right. So oh, there is a place in your textbook, um, it used to be in here too, um, that it gave you the, the different um, codes for the hues. I'll get to that part here in a minute because I have another book for it. But I want to put in there the yellow equals the Y, or the Y equals the yellow in your little fill in. Red orange equals R O. Okay. So value and level. <laughs> I guess my face went like on the. Ashley. <laughs> Ashley. Can you shut off your sound, please? Ashley, turn off the mic. Thank you. Okay. So 
value and level means like the degree is from one to 10. So you're gonna write in there, it's going to give you the degree of lightness and darkness or darkness, okay? Of a color relate, related to itself and to other colors. Then there are certain things called fields of color, okay? And all hair colors can be broadly categorized into three main fields, which are known as light, medium, and dark, okay? And then it says it's further divided into medium light and medium dark, okay? So if we're actually taking a color from say like a, somebody that's a seven, a level seven, which is like a blonde, Okay, it could be a lighter blonde or a darker blonde, depending on if it's warm or cool. Okay, and I'm going up maybe just two levels. Okay, one to two levels, I would probably be using 20 volume, but I'm in the light shade already, so I could get that second left, left, level of lift, I guess you could say. But if I was in like a level four, down by that medium dark, and I tried to go up to the medium, which is a two more levels, I might have to use a 30 volume. Okay, so the field's gonna tell you what volume of developer you're gonna have to use. Does that make sense? Depending on how dark it is and how light you wanna take that color. Does that make sense? At one point, you're gonna have 10 volume, you're gonna have 20 volume, you're gonna have 30 volume, and you're gonna have 40 volume, right? If you think about it. So 10 volume is gonna give you the same color. It's not gonna lift, it's just gonna deposit color in there, okay? It takes 20 volume to actually lift a color. Maybe it's only gonna give you one level of lift maybe two if it's light, okay? 30 volume is gonna give me almost three levels of lift, okay? But if it's dark, dark hair, it's only gonna give me two. See, so it depends on how dark the hair is, what level you're gonna have to go to. Does that make sense? You don't wanna go too light, like you don't wanna take a 40 on there and someone, unless you're gonna use a, a high lift tint. So I know I told you one through 10 would be our levels for our color numbers, but anything that's like an 11 or 12, they're considered to be known as high lift tints, which there are going to be blondes, but when you mix the formulation up, you're going to be doing four ounces of 40 volume developer and two ounces of color. Now, normally we would do two ounces of color and two ounces of 20 volume, so it's equal parts. But on a high lift tint, you're actually trying to lift that hair up or try to lighten it, almost like bleaching, but you're not bleaching, you're just using color to lift it. Does that make sense? So if you're looking over a 10 on a number of color, all right, 11s and 12s, you're gonna look at what's known as a high lift tint. Now, somebody that has very light hair, they could use that and they can almost get to a blonde, a real white blonde. But somebody that has very dark hair would have to be bleached up in order to get there. Okay, so they're trying to show you that you have to treat each head of hair differently depending on how dark or how light that hair is. Does that make sense to you? So you Sorry. can- Go ahead. Sorry. You can use a 40 volume on a blonde, that's safe? Um, it depends on, if you're trying to do a high lift tint on her, you can, yes. So yeah. you would, and you wouldn't leave it on for as long, obviously, as someone with darker hair, correct? Oh, correct, yeah. Yeah, really correct. I would just say this, the blonde might come up to the light, light blonde that you want with that, but the dark brown, it might need a toner afterwards, okay? So here's what happens when we lift somebody that's say like medium dark, okay? She's gonna start removing the red and the orange, right? But what's gonna leave is gonna be like an orangey kind of yellow color, all right? Because it's not gonna bring it up that light because it's so dark, right? So I don't want to have yellow and orange hair. So I would go to my color wheel and look to where the orange is or the yellow is and what's opposite that, okay? We either have lavender or you know violet or we have blue, depending on which one we're using, right? So I would find a base color or a tone that has that base in it. So I want it to be a nice, pretty blonde, but I'm gonna make sure that I either have a blue base to it or a violet base to it so I can cut that orange and get a nice color out of it. Does that make sense to you? Okay, I know a lot of you, this is your first time on color, but it's really not that hard. It really isn't. If you start to figure out that you're just canceling out one color when you're bringing up unwanted tones and unwanted is what you get when you lift color out of someone's hair. Okay, you can do it by bleaching or you can do it by high lift tints, but it just depends on how dark or light their hair is. Does that make a little sense? So those fields are gonna tell you what type of, or what level or volume of peroxide you're gonna use for developer. So go underneath where you have those swatches there, right? 
and it says level system. All right, you're gonna, it says level system equals the numbering system that identifies the lightness or darkness of hair color. Okay, so basically they're telling you levels are the lightness or darkness of a color. It'll be one to 10. All right, it says divides natural and artificial hair colors into 12 categories numbered one through 12. Some manufacturers use 10, okay? So one being the darkest on your little fill-in and 10 being the lightest. You see that? I just wanna make sure this is filled in before I go to the next page and then pull up the screen. All right, intensity refers to the vividness or brightness or the saturation of a color within its own level, okay? So I might have a 7R, level seven with a red hue to it, okay? Or I could go 7RR, which was more common. It's like a deeper red, okay? More of a punch, so it's like more vibrant, okay? So when you had another, another number, a letter to it, let's say you had 7RRR, now you're really getting that bright red because it's just adding more pigment of the red in there to punch that color up. Does that make sense? No, not yet. <laughs> Need some feedback, guys, remember? All right. So hair color intensity can range from mild to strong. Right? On your next page, it's on 350. Okay, it's talking about the formula, formula for identifying color. So that formula is going to be the contributing pigment, which is the client's hair color, and an artificial pigment will give you the final color result. So you have to think about both of those when you're deciding on what you wanna do. So the client comes in and says, I want to be this color right here. So you're looking at what she has right now. Is it colored or not colored? Is it virgin hair? Okay. And then what color am I gonna to use to get me to that, that point? So you've got to think of a little formula A and B to get your C. <laughs> I'm gonna share the screen here just a second. Right here. And let me know when you see this on the screen. Okay, do you all have this? Yeah, I can see it. All right, so what I just said, okay, to identify your client's natural or existing color is one of the first steps in a hair color service. So you're gonna look at the natural melanin and melanin is basically the color plus the artificial pigment equals your final color result. Okay, you have to keep thinking that over and over again. So go into where it says contributing pigment right underneath that equals the client's naturally present melanin, a combination of melanin and previously applied artificial color that's remaining on the hair. So pigment that gives hair its natural color and is determined through genetic coding. So depending on your parents or your genetics, okay, you either have light or darker skin, light or darker hair, light or darker eyes, okay? All these things fall into the same place. That's where the melanin comes from. And there are two types of melanin. There's eomelanin, which is a black pigment, all right? If you need spelling, it's E-U-M-E-L-A-N-I-N. -E or there's pheomelanin, and this is red pigment. So think of Fiona from Shrek. <laughs> She's got red hair, okay? All right, there are dense concentrations of eomelanin that equals very dark hair. Small population of eomelanin is equal to light blonde hair. And the predominantly amount of pheomelanin equals red hair. Okay. Does anybody need me to fill those in again one more time? No? You're yes, right. please. All right. So the very first one, the dense concentration, okay, is very dark hair. Okay. The small population is light. And the predominant amount of pheomelanin is red. So who do you think has the most hair per square inch on their head? Blondes, dark browns, 
Redheads. Anybody want to take Blonde. a guess? Blondes. Yeah, they do. They might have um, very fine hair, but it might be, there's a lot of it. All right, what about gray hair? Do you know what, how they get gray hair? Okay. It's a loss of pigment, pretty much, in the hair. Okay, the melanin production basically slows down and the hair strand loses its color. So it results in what's known as white hair, or canities, but the primary factor is heredity. Okay, if your parents got gray when they were 30, you might get gray when you're 30. Okay, if your parents had no hair, you were gonna have probably no hair. <laughs> okay, it kind of goes with your, your genes. So the percentages of color, okay, Prior to a color application, you're gonna determine the percentage of gray your client has. You may need to use different color formulas to accommodate different percentages of gray hair. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk about what happens when there is gray hair. There are a couple ways to actually cover it up. Okay, you can actually pre-soften the hair, which is taking a developer and applying it to that really stubborn area first. Let it sit on there about five minutes, and then you're gonna apply your color right on top of that. So it's using that developer to soften the hair because gray hair is really stubborn, okay? It's softening it up so it'll accept that hair color because sometimes it just won't accept it. I've seen clients that will wipe it off just about when they put their glasses on, you're like, Ugh. and she'll go, I have gray hair right here. I'm like, yeah, if you'd left your glasses off, you wouldn't have gray right hair right there. But <laughs> that's what happens. But there are other ways to actually get it too. Some of the color formulations are meant just strictly for gray hair. There are a little bit more um, pigment in there to cover that gray. Um, I even had someone show me a, a cool little trick because I had a girl that had albinism and it was just a big spot, like probably about the circle up size of a, a nickel, I guess you could say. And all of that hair in the front was just pure white, okay? Gray, whatever you want to call it. It didn't have any color on it. And when we did hair color on her, that hair did not take ever. So she gave me a little trick and it actually did work. She told me to go one level darker on my color that I normally would use on the rest of the head and go one level lighter in my developer. So my formula was supposed to be 4N, okay, and a 20 volume, equal parts. And so what I did do is a 3N and a 30 volume. And it actually, that developer actually opened up that cuticle a little bit more and that color went in there and it actually attached to the hair this time. And it looked the same as a 4N on the rest of her head, but it was just that area right there that wouldn't take. So there are a couple of different ways you can work that in there, but you have to determine how much gray hair someone has so that you can adjust that formula to cover it, okay? So under your 25% gray, you're going to put in that little box, more pigmented hair and less non-pigmented hair. Okay, which means she has more color in her hair. Okay, more pigmented hair, less non-pigmented hair. All right. Let's see if I can get a slide on this one first. I just went through this genetic coding. Sorry, you guys. I'll let you see your little genetic coding there. Does anyone want me to leave this slide up there so that you can see this? The difference between the black, red, and brown, and blonde hair. See how condensed the black is as far as the melon, it's got a lot in there a little bit less in the red. And then the brown, it's a little bit less. And then the blonde's a little bit lesser than that. Okay. Here's our gray hair. Okay, basically it's telling us when the white hair results, when melanocyte cells slow down the production of melanin. So it's a mixture of non-pigmented or white hair and pigmented hair on the same head makes it appear gray. I don't know if you've noticed this, but clients that do have dark hair, okay, and they are almost that white, okay, as it grows out, it almost looks like the client has no hair on her scalp. She almost looks like she's bald until we actually do the touch up on her and then she looks kind of normal after that. But it's kind of strange how the gray hair actually makes them look like they have less hair. 
So here's going to be our percentages. Okay, we're just talking about adjusting the color formulations according to the percentage of gray. So 25 to 30% gray, you're going to apply the color one level lighter than the desired shade. Okay. If it's 75 to 80% gray hair, you're going to apply that color one level darker than the desired shade. Okay, can you see the little boxes right there? Okay, it kind of goes to the light, medium, and dark, and then it goes to the 25, 50, and 75%. So go to the 50% box where it says 50% gray on your workbook. You're going to put in there, it's an even mixture of pigmented and non-pigmented hair. An even mixture of pigmented and non-pigmented hair. Okay. Now, the 75 to 80% gray, they have more non-pigmented hair and less pigmented hair, and the hair appears lighter. Okay, that's what I was just talking about. They almost look like they're bald because the hair looks lighter, right? So it's more non-pigmented non hair, less pigmented hair, and the hair appears lighter. So the more light it is, the darker you're gonna to have to put it in there. Okay, because it's gonna be a little re resistant. So go down to the box on your study guide and it says if the client has 25 to 30 percent gray hair apply that color one level lighter than the desired shade this is on your fill in okay 75 to 80 percent you're going to apply that level one level darker than the desired shade and when you're working with resistant hair you may need to pre-soften or pre-lighten that hair first Okay, and pre-soften, pre lighten is basically the same thing because you're going to use developer to apply to that hair first. Five minutes, and then you apply your color formulation right on top of that. Any questions so far on this? No? No. <laughs> nope, everybody. Good, because when you come in tomorrow, I'm going to make sure y'all have a test. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so tell me what pre-softening is. What are we doing to the hair? When, when you um, add the, you add a certain, I can't remember what you called it, but you add developer? something before you do the color. Yeah, it's the developer. It's like your peroxide. Developer. Yeah, you add the developer to it and then you add the color on top of it. Yes, exactly. Because you're trying to soften that hair up. Okay, because it's very resistant. So you want to get it so it will actually penetrate and actually color the hair that you're actually trying to do. All right, go to page 351 in your um, study guide. And it's going to be identifying the natural level and tone. So let me do something really quick here. If you guys were all in my class, I'm gonna change the page just for a second. Okay, with everyone being in the same classroom, what I normally would do with everyone here is I would say, okay, you guys are gonna determine for me, okay? Everyone would line up against the wall, all right? And you're going to go light to dark. So you're gonna look at your head of hair and figure out who you're lighter than and who you're darker than until you get the whole classroom in the right levels, okay? Some of them will look a little lighter than others. Some of them will look a little darker than others. Some that have, um, you know, your darker roots that are going out like four or five inches. I always used to take the light color because I needed more people with light hair. <laughs> so this is how you would determine your lights and darks from it, okay? So I just wanna, I can't really look at your hair right now because I can't see anybody, all right? I'm like, I'll let you guys look at each other and you decide. <laughs> Maybe you can do this tomorrow in Ms. Michelle's class. All right, I'm gonna flip the page to the other screen here and bring this back up. Okay. Again, we're talking about the degree of lightness or darkness of the color. 
and your three major fields, which are your dark, medium, and light. Okay. There we go. So in your book where it says identifying natural level and tone, you're gonna analyze the client's natural hair color okay, to determine the products, formulas, and techniques to use for the best results. Okay, you're going to analyze the client's natural hair, hair color, okay, to determine the products, formula, and techniques to use for best results. So where it says steps to analyzing color. First one, okay, you're gonna determine the general field. Okay. So you're gonna determine whether the client's hair is in that dark, medium, dark, medium, medium light or light hair, right? So that's what you would put in your first little bubble right there where it says first. You're gonna determine the general field. Okay, then you're going to use color swatches to identify the specific level. Okay, so we have color swatches that show the natural color and then we have color swatches for the artificial color. All right, then you're going to, like I said, identify specific level one through 10 or one through 12, whichever color company you're using. And finally, you're gonna determine whether the tone is either warm or cool. So going back to, well, actually looking at this, you see that light actually is levels eight, nine, and 10. Medium is gonna be levels four, five, six, and seven. And your dark is going to be levels one, two, and three. Now I am gonna go back to this. Okay, so that you can actually see the hair. So. Can you look at this chart right here and tell me what your hair is? Okay, what, which one of those your hair is and then tell me whether it's cool or warm. Okay, and I'm actually gonna call out each one of you so you can decide what it's going to be. Okay. Do you want like the number that we just went over, the numbers that we just went yeah. over or just, okay. Well, you can go, I just want you to know what field you're in. Like if you're dark hair or medium hair or light by the screen. Okay, and then tell me if you are cool or warm. So Haley, Hi. what are you? <laughs> okay, let me see. Mine's probably be like medium dark, I would say. Okay, and I would be on the cool side. Does that give you a hint of what I'm talking about? I'll go. All right, who are you? Um, Selena. I would okay. say my hair is definitely on the dark side. Um, and mine's warm, more warm than cool. Probably then. Okay. Um, let's see, Jasmine H, are you there? Yeah, sorry for the background noise, but um, I think I'm medium dark with warm tones. Okay, good. Ashley? Um, I would say that anything. I'm, okay. no, I'm here? not driving. Okay. Well, I have half is going to be like a dark tone, and then the other half is going to be light. Okay. And are you warm or cool? Warm. <clears throat> okay. All right. Raylena? Here you um, are. My hair is on the dark side. And I would say warm. Warm, okay. All right, um, Shay, your turn. <laughs> I know she's there. Um, <laughs> I'm dark to medium. You're what? Sorry. Um, dark you to medium. Okay, and then what, are you warm or cool? And then I'm, uh, I'm warm. Okay. Um, let's see. Venetia, what are you, hun? Mine is dark. Uh, I would say warm. Okay. Um, Isabella. Oh, 
I would say I have dark hair with warm tones. Okay. Um, Jocelyn. I would say I have darkish hair with cool tones. Okay, good. So you're getting the gist of this, right? How you determine somebody's like level and field, right? Because that, that field is gonna tell us where we're gonna put our developer, believe it or not, whether it's light, medium and dark. Okay, they're basically trying to put that one through 10. So again, here we go back to <clears throat> identifying the natural level and tone, all right? You're gonna determine the general field that it's in. You're gonna use a color swatch to identify the specific level. And then you're gonna determine whether the tone is warm or cool. So let's just say your client is a level six, okay? So it's a dark blonde like a light, light, medium brown kind of even. Okay, so she wants, she thinks that she wants maybe that ash blonde kind of color to it, but she doesn't look very good in that ash blonde, but that's the color that she wants because she's picked it out in a color swatch booklet, right? And said, that's the color I want. Or she's gone into the shop somewhere and saw one of the stylists there here that color. So now she wants to be that color, but her tone is not, fit for that color. In other words, her tone is a warm tone. So instead of getting her upset and having her get that blonde hair like she wants, and then when you finally turn her around to look at herself in the mirror, she's like, ew, that doesn't look like what I wanted. I don't want that because it doesn't look right on her because she is a warm tone. So sometimes you just have to take that swatch like I was talking about yesterday and fan it across the client's forehead so you can see how that color lays against her skin tone because it makes a big difference. I could still make her blonde, but I just have to choose a different tone to it, okay? Or a different red to it, because red can come in a warm or come in cool. So you just have to make sure that you're checking, not just giving the client what she wants as far as saying, I want that color over there. Put it up next to her skin to see if she can actually wear that color, because she's gonna hate you if she can't wear it, trust me. If she doesn't have a problem with it, have that color when you put the swatch on it, then fine, do it. <laughs> All right, so I guess a quick question. Yeah, sure. What would like a more cool red look like? Mine's a cool red. It's got a blue, purple, violet kind of colors to it. Okay. And then on the red, orange kind of is the other side of the warm red. Does that make okay. it easy to see? Mm -hmm. Okay. I was hoping one of these slides might have some color swatches so you could see it. But are you coming in tomorrow? Like, do you come to school on Thursdays? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, come by my class and I will get a color swatch and show you the book so that okay. you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Here we go. Identifying that artificial level, tone, and intensity. All right. The manufacturers will identify and name their artificial hair colors by level and tone, such as level five, red violet, which is mine is a level four, red violet. Okay. Then it's going to field and tone, which is medium to red violet or tone or name such as a red violet or mahogany. So they, they come up with these funny little names and it's kind of funny too because they change them over a period of time. People get stuck in those and they don't like those words. And so they come up with a new word every fall for a new color. And it's basically the same color they used before, but okay. I'm coming at 20 minutes to it, okay. Who was the last person that came in here? Because I didn't get you down on um, the a roll sheet. Do you remember? I think it you... might have been me because I joined late because I put in the wrong code. So I was waiting to join and hold it. Okay, class what's your name? Because I didn't get it. Selena Gomes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh huh. And then I just let in. Did she get in here or not? Maybe not. All right. I'm going to. Turn the page down here. Okay, in your book where it says identifying artificial level and tone. Okay, it says if your client has already had a color service in the past, you'll need to identify these three things. Okay, and the first one is natural or genetic hair color. Okay, so that's what you have to put in your book next to that little dot. It says natural or genetic hair color. 
Okay, the second one is going to be artificial color that has been added to the hair. Okay, artificial color that has been added to the hair. And the third one is going to be the level and tone of the artificial color. Now, some of you have color on your hair, right? Okay, so it's saying the level and tone of that artificial color. All right, so back to the tone in the base color, your predominant tone in an artificial color will identify warmth or coolness or neutrality. Your base colors such as yellow or red orange may be described as golden blonde or auburn. Those are your warm shades, okay, of your blonde, if you wanna think about it. Your base colors with green or violet base colors might be described as ash for the green, okay, and platinum, which is your violet, okay? So it's basically showing you those same colors right here. Okay. So if I want okay, if yellow, I wanted, yellow, orange. Go ahead, hun. So if I wanted the um, I don't know if that's red, it looks red. The I guess like the second person's hair. It's like if I wanted that red, but to have it more of like a okay. Are you talking about the, the blonde or the dark the one in the middle, the darker hair? The darker hair. Or the red. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the yeah, third one like, or the first one. red in it. I'm like zoomed in as close as I can get. But if I wanted like that red tone, but I wanted it to be more, I don't want it to be as orangey. What, like, what would you suggest? Are you, okay, let me just make sure. Are you talking about the one, the red hair, the dark red hair with a streak in the front? Is that the one you're talking about? Or the one on the very end, that reddish? The girl with the red lipstick. Okay, oh, all right. Crap, they both have red lipstick. Okay, thank you. That helps. Okay, so what's wrong with this one? You don't want what now? No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, say if someone came in, they say that they want that red hair, but they want it to not be darker. They just want it to have like a different tint to it. Like they don't want it to be orange red. They want it to be some like something else. Okay. But there's so, so listen to this now. Okay. Okay. If I took that same color, okay, and wanted to go lighter, do you know where it would be? Would be on the red orange. It would start lifting up that color. It starts going to the warm shade of that. Right. So it would be, I don't want to say it would be as light as that red on the very end, mm -hmm. but that's like the extreme of it. Because what happens is every color has a light and a dark to it, basically, a, a cool and a warm to it. And all of your warm shades are always going to be lighter than your your um, ash shades, your ash ones are always gonna look darker. So I can have a seven ash and I can have a seven gold and they're gonna look like two different levels of color, but they're not. They're the same level, but they just have a different tone on them. Okay. And I really, I really do, if you wanna see that, come with a girl that's coming to see the color swatches with her, I'll show you the, the difference between those colors. It's kind of bizarre, but it's the same level as that girl that has the little headband and lipstick on, okay? But when you start to go into the lighter end of that same level, you're starting to get it up lighter, completely lighter, okay? So that's where you got your reds being in the same light or dark, depending on what you're gonna do. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Okay. Kinda, yeah. Because you're ending up going up to the warmer shades, right? You wanna go lighter, it's gonna be warmer. No, I wanted to like say they want like, I don't know if this is the right term, but like a blue okay. red, like they don't want, they don't want it to, they want it to be vibrant, but they don't want it to start okay. looking orangey. Okay, but blue red is, blue is like the darkest color. So you're looking at a dark color to begin with. Yeah, but they just, they want it to still be vibrant, like. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna come with her with tomorrow, uh, those little swatches if you can, and we'll go through the color book and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Sometimes it, you just have to see it, you know what I mean? And I can't like show it to you on this camera. It's, it's not, it's not gonna show up like you need to see it. Okay, I'll just, I'll just, sense? yeah, I'll just come in. Okay. Explain. All right, great. You know where I'm at, right? In the aesthetic department? I'll find I'm you. Back. I'm in the corner in the back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So, any questions so far on the base colors? Okay. All right. Let's go to tone and bases here. All right. Your common base colors are, and names for those artificial colors. All right. So base colors, when it's Y, it's gonna stand for yellow, 
Okay, R is obviously gonna stand for red. B is for blue, G is for gold, V is for violet, A is for ash, N is for neutral, G is for green, red orange is RO, RV is red violet, blue violet is BV. So you'll see these on the side of your color. It'll be level six, level seven, level three, and then it'll have one of these level letters next to it. So your platinum is gonna be on the violet, your golden blonde is gonna be on the yellow gold, your ash blonde is gonna be the blue violet, your chestnut brown is gonna be on the green, so it's gonna be ashy. Your golden brown has a gold base to it. Your copper gold has an orange base to it. Your auburn has a red orange. Your burgundy has red violet. Mahogany has red violet. Plum brown is red violet. Black velvet is violet. And blue black is blue. So depending on the depth of it, it'll start to get darker in those shades, okay? So you have to be able to remember what those letters are gonna stand for. So when you pick a color out, you'll know the tone that you're actually getting with it. Because sometimes clients just come in and look in the book and they're like, oh, I want that one. It's the mahogany brown. And you're like, okay. And I love this one because they go, I don't want red. Okay. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, no, I don't. I, I really don't want red. I'm like, okay. And you know, um, it's got red in it, right? So I have to tell them sometimes I'm like, it's got red in it. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but they're looking at the swatch and not so much the, the base on it like we do, okay? <laughs> It's quite, quite funny. I'm like, I don't want red. I'm like, okay, so you pick out the color that you want right here. <laughs> and that's red. <laughs> All right, your intensity. This is gonna refer to how mild or how strong the color is. So your mild red orange is gonna be on the left side and your strong red orange is gonna be on the right side. I don't know if it's the same as yours as, as mine, but the curly hair is the red orange mild, okay? And then it goes into intensity may be altered by adding complementary color. It'll neutralize or add concentrated color to intensify. So that's where we're getting into that orange red. It could be orange, orange red, or it could be red, red, orange. You see where I'm going with that? When I've got a double letter, I'm getting it more intense or more of that pigment, that red pigment in there. Okay, so it says color selection considerations in your book. And then it says predominant underlying tone of a color formulation is known as the base color. So you need to fill that part in, the base color. And then right below it, it has the intensity of color is lessened by adding a complementary color, increased by adding a concentrated color, okay? So your first one was base color, the second one was complementary, and the third one was concentrated. before I get to that. In that little box down at the bottom of the page on 351, it says manufacturers identify and name artificial colors in several ways. By level and tone, such as your 5RV, or by field and tone, such as your medium red violet, or by base color and or name, such as red violet or mahogany. Names of the base colors often are devised to indicate warmth or coolness of the color or its or its tone. Okay, I'm going to cover just a little bit more and then I'm going to call it here. Has anybody got any questions so far than what we've gone through, like yeah. depending on your homework, huh? Yeah, I have a question about what we just went over though. Okay, let me sh shut the screen off. Okay, go ahead, Anna. I was just wondering like what the ratios would look like if you're adding like um, a complementary color, like would it be half and half the color you want half the complementary or like what? Um, well, it depends on how much, remember your complementary is gonna like cancel that brightness, right? It's mm -hmm. just gonna make it kind of neutral, okay? If you add more concentration to it, which is like straight pigment to it, you're gonna have a more vibrant color to it. So let's say um, I wanted to neutralize my red orange or something, I would look for what, what's opposite you use to actually cancel out that color. So it's going to be 
a little less vibrant. Does that make sense? Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. I don't know if, I, if you're questioning it or not. Um, when you add a complementary color, you're going to weaken the strength of it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I was just wondering if like if you add like- complementary is gonna just make it- How much you add? Yeah, yeah, that's more my like, question. Okay, all right. So they always start out with like a, like a teaspoon of it, depending on if you're using a liquid or if it's like a cream powder to it, or it might be like a quarter of a of a of an ounce. Okay, okay. It could be. It just depends. Yeah, it basically will tell you when you add pigments to it. It'll tell you how much to add for each. So many ounces. Okay, okay? thank you. All right, that's the best way because everybody's got it a little bit differently, but it'll just depend on the formula that you're going to use in the first place. Okay how strong or something it'll be but it's usually like a quarter of an ounce half ounce something like that okay all right any other questions nothing how about the homework that you had have you got any questions about the homework and what we've gone over today Ms. Sweeney? yes i was wondering if you got me i came in late because i had technical problems who who are you hun it's eva Eva, okay, you just came in, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've got you in here, but I only can give you like 15 minutes of the class. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I can still give it to you. <laughs> I can still give it to you. All right. Okay. Sorry, hun. I mean, I can give you that much <laughs> because they have this all recorded, so they catch it anyways. You know what I mean? As far as whether you're in class or not. All right. Please, somebody have one question for me. Tell me something you learned today that you didn't know about color. How to bleach hair properly. Okay. Um, anybody how to know? cover the gray. How to cover gray, yeah. Okay. That have any of you, you tried to, to cover gray at home? No. Just softening, yeah. But has Just anybody soften, ever yeah. tried to cover gray at home? To cover gray. Yeah, I do it's that. It's like going messy. I dye my mom's hair. <laughs> she has gray. Yeah. Does it cover it always? She dyes she dyes it black. It covers it, yeah. Okay. There is a little um, I guess they have this little package that you can put in there. They're called gray drops. Okay. And you add that to your formula and it actually works as a softener and covers that gray also. But nowadays you have you're lucky that you have color formulas that are just meant for gray hair, period. You don't even have to worry about that. Back in the day, we had to play all kinds of games with it just to get it to cover. <laughs> all right, if there's no questions, I'm gonna let you guys go. Okay, and I'll oh, see the- The homework is just the study guide, right? Yep. Okay. All right, so tomorrow, um, come in, the two girls that were asking about the color questions, come in and I'll show you the swatch book, okay? Okay. All righty. Uh-huh. Um, I just missed one of the filling in. It's the beginning. Okay. Formula uh -huh. for identifying color where it says contributing pigment. Uh huh. On what page? Yeah. Uh, on mine is for eighty-two. Okay. All right. So it says which one is it? <laughs> Go ahead. Clients naturally present or a combination of so the three answers here. Oh um. Um, I'm trying to think. Of. Okay, it's contributing factor, right? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, well, it says contributing pigment plus artificial pigment. Equals final color result. Yeah, and the second one is? Okay, oh, the second one is the artificial or naturally present melanin or a combination of melanin and previously applied artificial color remaining on the hair. Is that what you needed? Yeah, combination of melanin again. Okay, yes. And so previous previously, applied. yeah, artificial color. Color, okay. Thank you. I missed that because I changed the, the screen thing. I know, it's okay. Thank you. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. See you Bye. Tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>
Bye.